What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Alright, first up is called Spaghetti Girl. Sell a broken laptop to my kid? Lie to me? Threaten me? As you wish. Hi, Reddit. This happened a few years ago on Facebook Marketplace to my dad. I'm the kid. My dad told me this story about one week ago when I asked why my birthday present a few years ago disappeared in mysterious ways. Oh boy, was I not prepared for that. Please note, English is not my primary language language, but I'll try to clarify anything, just ask. (laughs) Lots of backstory. I was around 13 at the time. Now 19, I was hooked on Minecraft, and my dad and I spent quite some time on the Xbox 360 version. I got good grades in school, so he decided it was time for us to switch to PC. He already had a pretty good PC for his work as a programmer and IT administrator, and he wanted me to get a cheap laptop. We had a hard time and almost no money, so it had to be cheap and used. He saw an offer on Facebook Marketplace from a girl he and my mother met at a club he was DJing at a few years back. Let's call her Spaghetti Girl. She was selling lots of stuff because she moved in with her boyfriend and her kids. Among that stuff was a cheap laptop. Nothing fancy, pretty scuffed, and only the network port didn't work, according to her. No big deal, and for 50 euro or 54 US dollars, worth a shot. My dad contacted Spaghetti Girl and wanted to pick up the laptop just in time for my birthday. He had to wait for his paycheck. Rough times. When the day came, he went to the agreed spot, but she didn't show up. She called later that day and told my dad that she had to wait for her boyfriend to wipe the hard drive as she didn't trust my dad. My dad assured her that he had no intentions to snoop around in her stuff and he could help her with that. After all, he's an IT guy. No, my boyfriend works for the CIA and he's a hacker. Yeah, right. A CIA hacker in Germany by the name of Hans Huber. Name changed, but a very German name. Okay, fine. She insisted that the laptop still works and that just the network port is busted. After one week, my dad picked up the laptop, paid the 50 bucks, and headed home. He couldn't test it on site because the battery was dead. Back at home, the laptop was, of course, dead. He opened it up and found a mixture of nicotine, coffee, and undefined fluids. Close your eyes and imagine the sound of a velvet velcro strap being pulled open. That was the sound the keyboard made when he tried to lift it up. I still remember that sound because I stood next to him and wanted to get my laptop going ASAP. I cried the whole night. Of course, my dad contacted the pasta lady right away. She insisted that he must have broken it as it worked yesterday, and that she also wanted 10 euro for the bag that she gave him with it. My dad was calm on the outside, but he locked up his office door for four hours and instructed us to not go in there for the next few days days. Finally, after a wall of text. The autopsy. Remember that my dad was an IT administrator at the time? Turns out, he was pretty good at his job. He was a guest lecturer at some universities, held talks about data recovery on conferences, etc. My dad plugged in the still good hard drive into his work PC and had a look. Of course, hacker Hans only had formatted the drive. He recovered some files to look for any logs that would indicate that the laptop had worked yesterday. The last files were from half a year ago, and it wasn't shut down as the dirty bit for Windows was also set. Everything indicated that the laptop was dead for at least half a year. Great work, Hans. On the second evening, when my dad was looking for evidence, he stumbled across some pictures. One of an elderly man with a guitar, a few from the nightclub back in the days. I remember how I heard my dad laugh inside his office, but I wasn't allowed in and the door was locked. That upset me back then. Now I understand. The spaghetti incident. She had some pictures taken of her with some spaghetti meticulously rolled up into a circle on her breast. Lots 
of spaghetti, with a blob of sauce in the middle to cover up the nipples. Her boyfriend was sitting next to her with some chopsticks. I mean, who in the world eats spaghetti with chopsticks? And who pays a photographer to take pictures of that? My dad tried to ask her for the money back and even offered to help and get her her files back. It didn't mention the spaghetti pictures. She went on to attack my dad publicly on Facebook. Stuff like, there's this guy, dad's name, who tries to blackmail me, what should I do? And, no, I don't want your pictures, dad's name. And to top it all off, when my boyfriend learns about this, he'll hack you. A few private messages followed. Shut up about that stupid laptop and give me the 10 euros for the bag, or else I'll tell everyone you wanted to violate me. Also a few insults. My dad had enough of that. He suspended his Facebook account and went silent. He almost lost his job and family over this, but he was smart enough to save all the chat logs with her, so he could prove to my mother and and his boss that he wasn't blackmailing anybody. And he wasn't sending nude pictures to anybody. Yet. The revenge. After a few months, my dad had a new Facebook account and everything was back to normal. He landed a new job, didn't add his boss on Facebook this time, and didn't use his real name. He even joined the Old Nightclub Alumni, a group on Facebook to connect with a few friends from back in the days. One beautiful day, he finds a new post in the group by Spaghetti Girl, asking everyone for pictures of the good old days as a thief stole her laptop and tried to blackmail her with deleting the pictures. My dad kindly responded. He had this evil grin on his face when he told me a few days ago. Oh, hey, Spaghetti Girl, long time no see. I have quite a lot of pictures from the time found them on an old hard drive. Even some of you and your boyfriend at a nice pasta dinner. And a few screenshots with old chat logs. Do you want me to send them to you via private message, or should I just share them here? Nah, just share them here. As you wish. Hey, there's also good news for her. She also got the pictures of her recently deceased father back. The nice gentleman with a guitar in 160 by 160 pixels. Oui. The fallout. Facebook blew up that day and the weeks after, at least in our little slice of the world, a few things happened. She was dropped by her friends. They all cut ties with her. Turned out she pulled a similar thing with a bouncer of that nightclub, got him fired and expelled from their group of friends. He was the creator of said Facebook group. Noodle Bimbo and Chopstick Penis were quickly both tagged in all of the pictures by their former friends. Even her cat was tagged in one of the pictures. Her boyfriend, Hans, of 12 years, recognized one of her tattoos that he paid for. So the picture had to be taken recently. He recognized the bed she was on. But he wasn't the chopstick-wielding dude in the picture. He was now Han Solo. <laughs> My dad never really looked that much at the pictures. So he didn't see that Spaghetti Queen had laid out quite a bunch of drugs, weed, pills, and a Ziploc bag in the background of her pictures. This minor detail was discovered by the Chopstick Master's current girlfriend, who of course told the police, CPS, or uh, Jugendamt Jun, Jun, in Germany. I'm really good at German. And both of their parents. Police couldn't do much. Their kids were taken away for a while. I don't know what happened afterwards. A few colleagues of her saw that post. She quit her dream job of being a cashier at Aldi soon after that. She had to move out of Han's flat. She moved across the country if her new Facebook account is to be believed. She used the name of her cat. I know I'm being a spiteful prick over this, but I think she got what she deserved. And 50 bucks. Today! We sold the hard drive and the RAM from the laptop for 30 euros each afterwards. With the money, my dad bought a used HP laptop for me. Minecraft at 30 FPS. Coming from the Xbox 360, this felt right at home. For my 17th birthday, I got a, back then, brand new computer. Ryzen 16 
1500X, a GTX 1060, 16 gigs of RAM, and a brand new SSD with no spaghetti pictures on it. My dad and I still play Minecraft together. He is now a software developer at a bigger company and we have no concerns about money. Not rich, but not paycheck to paycheck. Not all heroes wear capes, but my dad does. He went to Minecon. Oh my god! I know, it was pretty long. Hope it was worth your time. Greetings from Germany, Chris. Edit, a few clarifications. We were in a pinch financially because we had to pay double rent because we moved recently. My mom lost her job and our car broke down. That was a bit too much and it took a few months to recover. My dad, of course, opened the lid of the laptop when picking it up. Everything visible without disassembling the computer looked fine. The Velcro moment was uh, when he took it apart to see if it was an easy fix, like a blown fuse on the input circuit. Some of you pointed out that Facebook Marketplace was introduced in 2016. However, people have been selling stuff on Facebook for years. There were buy-sell groups before that. For me, everything bought from Facebook was from the Facebook Marketplace, so I might have mixed that up when writing. Today I learned, people do eat spaghetti with chopsticks. I didn't want to judge you guys. In Germany, this is very uncommon. Here's how Hans formatted the drive of a non-working computer. He took out the hard drive, put it into a working computer, put on his black hoodie and ski mask for full hacker mode, and typed color A and format D, or whatever the drive letter was. For more hacking tutorials, follow me on Instagram. Okay, first of all, that PC for 2017 was a beast! At least for me, because my computer right now has a 1050, which is not great. But soon, I shall get a 2080. But anyway, this is a really cool story, really heartwarming. Um, even though I personally am not a huge Minecraft fan, I know, blasphemy, I just grew up with Roblox. And I tried Minecraft back in the day, but I just got bored, man. I tried it so many times. Just, I can't get into it. I just can't. Anyway, man, thank you for sharing. That was a really good story. And it's really cool that you guys can game together. All right, this story's called A Tale of Revenge on a Nasty Supervisor, U.S. Air Force Edition. This happened in the mid-80s while I was active duty Air Force. I was a sergeant, E-4. My direct supervisor was a tech sergeant, E-6. This tech sergeant, Rob, not his real name, was a real jerk. He was about 5'10 and a beanpole. He lived on coffee and cigarettes and thinking of ways to bully subordinates. Well, in addition to being a jerk, Rob had a very nasty sense of humor. He could dish it out, but he couldn't take it. We had these old metal desks with plexiglass covering the tops. He started in on me with super gluing my coffee cup to the plexiglass top. Needless to say, when I pick up the cup, everything went everywhere. Of course, the whole office laughed hysterically. I didn't blame them. Nobody wanted to be Rob's target. Next, he moved my car to another parking lot. Right before I called the security police, he told me where my car was. He kept it up, not just me either, but the whole office, till one day he went to far. We had just gotten a new captain assigned to our branch. He was a nice man, quiet, kind, and earned all of our respect. He heard about all the crap Rob pulled and witnessed a few of the milder pranks. Then, Rob got nastier. I went out to the parking lot at the end of the day, and my car, a little Civic, was up in blocks. I almost had a stroke. Rob went too far. Granted, the captain made Rob put my tires back on and read him the riot act. Back in the 80s, the atmosphere was much more relaxed, i.e. you could get away with more. The captain and I decided that I should get my revenge. My revenge had to be carefully thought out, and I had to cover my ass as Rob could destroy my career. First, the captain changed my reporting official, supervisor, to himself. This was to prevent Rob from writing me a horrible, or mediocre, Airman Performance Report, or APR. The timing was important, as Rob had just written my annual report, so the change in reporting official wouldn't trigger another APR. Then I went to the base hospital and got a few letterheads from a friend in the Environmental Health Office. The Environmental Health Office was the office that handled all the reports of SDI 
eyes and did all the mandatory interviews. I had to swear on my unborn child's heads that this wouldn't get back to them. The captain and I went to work on a letter scheduling a date for Rob to be interviewed as a confirmed contact of someone who was positive with an STI. This was going to hit Rob hard. You see, he thought the world of himself. According to him, he was his wife's master and he ruled the house and his kids. He never had any other woman but his wife, who according to him, worshipped the ground he walked on. Also, she wouldn't even leave the house to buy groceries without letting him know or asking permission. I sort of believed him on that one as she called the office several times a day. Well, the letter was written and placed in the afternoon distribution. The captain made sure he was standing right next to Rob when he opened his official mail. Rob was a creature of habit and always stood right by his distribution tray to read his mail, coffee and cup, cigarettes in hand. I was sitting at my desk watching. I swear Rob turned white and I could hear him say something to the captain. I could see the captain reading the letter Rob handed him, so I moved a bit closer not a huge office, and heard the captain say, Well, Rob, have you been horsing around? Rob, of course, was denying this. Like, really, who would touch him? Yuck. And kept saying, I can't believe this. It wasn't until a few minutes later when Rob went to grab a phone to call his wife that the captain said, Wait, Rob. He, the cap, looked at me and said, Do you think this is enough? The captain and I both busted out laughing. Everyone in the office was looking around confused confused and asking what was so funny. Neither the captain or I would tell anyone what was going on. Rob knocked over the distribution boxes, threw his car key, and started having a fit. The captain stops Rob's fit and basically told him quietly that he deserved what he got and he ordered Rob to stop with the pranks. Thank God I had thought about changing my reporting official because Rob would have roasted me. Not much later, I volunteered for an overseas assignment. It seemed the prudent thing to do. My revenge did get around eventually, within the upper ranks. It seemed to be a consensus that Rob got what he deserved. Yes, he did. Um, but if he was gonna call his wife right away, that's pretty admirable. All right, as you guys know, I like to have a little bit of a silly, wholesome palate cleanser after a revenge episode, or at the end of a revenge episode, but I can't always do that. But today I can because I found a cool little story called Silly Story from a Not-So-Bright Customer. And if you do enjoy it, cool. If not, I'm sorry. I was explaining our house cocktails to a customer at a table. One of my favorites is called She's Ma. We call it this because it tastes like sweet cherry pie. It's a delicious delicious, tart, sweet, fruity, bubbly cocktail. I think she misheard me because she immediately says, what kind of cheese is in it? To which I replied, oh no, it's called She's My. She then responds, well, yeah, but what kind of cheese is in it? I say, no, there's no cheese. I think you may have misheard me. It's called She's My because it tastes like sweet cherry pie. Okay, she orders it. I go on to explain another cocktail called Dill With It. The base spirit is Aquavit, which is like gin but distilled with dill instead of juniper. I explain this to her and no joke. She shouts, oh so it's made with pickles? I had a hard time holding back a laugh. Oh come on, I feel like that's a situation I'd be in, but I'd, I'd, I'd probably catch on and laugh about it, <laughs> but I know nothing about al alcohol or cocktails and I don't know what people drink. People do some weird stuff with alcohol. So, <laughs> this, is a, this is a funny story. I enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it an upvote because I liked it. Wait, I can't. It's, it's archived. <gasps> I read an old story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.